that's all right. I like getting you in there as well. Yeah. Right, hi everybody. Welcome to a new video. Now in the last video with the yellow car, we spoke about me actually buying my own personal car. So in this video, we're gonna feature the car and run through it. So. I'm alone, I'm a broken home. I gave you all the bricks that I own and know. I'm letting go, I'm breaking these walls down, breaking these walls down. If you want adventure, then fly to home. But if you want to travel, then go alone. Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go. We've actually got two. At the time of the last video, we only had one. It was the red car. Now, I've always wanted a guard's red, black leather, foosh wheels, manual coupe, air-cooled car. So there it is. I had a really nice day buying that. Went out on a Sunday afternoon. It was a nice sunny day. And the owner was actually a pilot for the RAF. So I got to drive it around the runway and around the barracks. And uh, yeah, it was a really good collection, that. However, since then, another one came up and I just couldn't help but also buy that one. So this is a Carrera White. It's the same year, they're both 1986, 3.2 Carreras. Now the owner to this one has kind of done a club sports replica with it. So the club sports always came in Carrera White. They had the red wheels. They had the fog lights deleted. So if you look at the two, they've been smoothed off on this car. They'd also have had club sport down the side, club sport on the back in red, which I think we're gonna put on it. And they had little things inside, like the armrest um, flaps and stuff were removed just to save a little bit of weight. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to go around both cars. We're going to take both out for a spin. Ollie's not driven one before, so we'll no. get his first reaction to that. I'm very new to it. He called it a banger in the last video, which I'm still... An old banger. I'm still pretty upset about. Yeah, um, they are pretty... We haven't had either on the ramp yet. I've done my normal inspection on the floor, crawling all around, taking notes and whatnot, but we haven't had them in the workshop on the ramp yet. So we've got one of the ramps free. When we get back, we're going to get them both up and see what surprises lay in store or not, yeah. hopefully. So obviously we're really well renowned for 996, 997s, and that's what we specialize in. But we have had some air cooled ones, but not in a little while. The main thing you should be looking for when you're looking at these air cooled cars is rot. So what I'm going to do, we're going to walk around them and show the kind of really prone areas. So just normal classic car areas, I guess. Look along the seals very carefully for us. Go along those seals, they're absolutely solid. Wheel arches, these wheel arches are absolutely solid. Both cars are the same. Now on these old air-cooled cars, we might not be able to get a very good clip. There's an area called the kidney bowls. Now it's behind the shut here. Behind here, inside the panel, you've got to actually look through here. Look. There's a welded in panel. You can put your hand in there and actually just feel if it's rusty. I don't think you're going to get it. No. It's in there behind the but where is it? Right behind here. It's right behind there and they're welded solid in the back there and they rot out badly on these cars. Yeah. So all four kidney bowls, so two to each car, are good on these. What else do I want to show? Sorry, scuttle panel. You often see bubbling and rust along the scuttles. It's a very prone area. Go in the front. Behind the carpets, down by the battery. Look at here, all solid. It's usual areas for classic cars, but these are really prone on these. The scuttle panels particularly. The last one I had, a 993. The body itself was all very good. The scuttle panel had just started to go. So I had to have some work done on that. But like I say, first and foremost on the air cooled 911s is rot. If we look around the bodies generally. Now, we'll talk about it later more in more depth, sorry. But the white car, I think, had a pretty recent small resto. Whereas the red one, it's been well cared for. The body works very good, but the paint isn't as good. So we come up and have a look around. I think we'd end up having both bumpers done at least. We have a look. 
just things like the rubbers on the car. So I've already spoken to you about this before, haven't I? I just yeah. want to replace all the rubbers. I want to replace this, this, I want to replace these. The ones between the wings and the scuttle. If you look in comparison to the white car, look, just pan from that one to that one. Makes just a massive some, difference, doesn't it? The splitter as well. You can just see they've all been renewed on the white car. That's already all been done. The rubbers around the screens. This particular car, definitely have the windscreen taken out and have all the rubbers renewed. If you look on the other, look, just compare the two. Just look at the red one up close and then look at the screen surrounding the white one. Yeah, you can see that it's pretty scatty and horrible in comparison to this. The body's lovely. The body is lovely and straight. There's no dents or dings anywhere on it. But it's just the paintwork and the rubbers and stuff are just showing your age. You can still get all the parts. You can get all the rubbers and the gaskets for the mirrors. You can get the bits for around the windows. All these bits can still be obtained. So I think that's what we'll end up doing. If you look at the wheels as well, look, the wheels are doing a refurb. They're not curved up, but they've just not been done in a while. Compare that to the red ones over there. Yeah, these look brand new. Do you want to see something really nice that I only noticed earlier that I've never seen before in these? Oh, it's the other side. I prefer the seats in this white one. I don't know, full leather, but it looks more retro. I like it. Look at this. I love that. I never noticed that before on these small details underneath the spoiler there no one ever sees that unless you're lifting the lid up and the actual it's embroidered yeah into that. it's just really cool i've never noticed that before Lovely. quick look on the interior it's very very similar cars but for the internal panels of the seats yeah, they look awesome they look like a pair of trousers i've got at home you prefer those yeah i'm just a sucker for black leather yeah but you got black leather and that nice stitch in the back. If you look as well, we were saying that light resto, the dash on this one, it just looks a bit a bit fresher, a bit cleaner. I think the red one will come up just the same, but I think someone's been at this and, and detailed it nicely and degreased. This look that a bit dash, cleaner. All the door it? cards. Yeah, look, if we compare, we can whip over to the other one. Everything in both cars is all original, nothing's been toyed with. I'm saying that, they've both got aftermarket stereos, apart from the stereos. Neither of which work properly, by the way, so that'd be first on the list. So we've got the full leather on this one. It still looks really nice, but it's what you prefer, I prefer isn't black it? leather. It depends what you like, yeah. Yeah. It just looks a little bit more, it's got a bit more of a sheen to it. It just needs a good scrub. Saying that, it's in really good condition. The other air cool cars I had were in nowhere near as good condition as these two. Right. There we go. Should we get out on the road? Yeah, let's get out on the road. Right, Ollie, my son. Don't think I want to touch that. Right, be careful with that. We're going on the right there. Right, where should we go? Guess go right. Yeah? Oh, let's get that window down, it's hot, isn't it? Oh, that's a big tractor, Ollie. You could slow down, couldn't you? Oh, there you go. Is he going to say thank you? Is he going in this field? Yeah, don't worry about it, mate. So both these cars, they're 1986. The red one, which we're in now, is a D-Reg, and the white one is slightly earlier on a C-Reg. And what that means is neither cars have got the famous G50 gearbox. They've both got the G15 gearbox, which is quite awkward to get into gear. Yeah, you'll, you'll yeah it's pretty very simple. awkward to get They've also gear. got reverse across well below five so where sixth gear would be these are a five gear gearbox reverse is where six would be rather than the g50 it's across and up so to the left of first but the main thing is just the feel of the gearbox the g50 is a very famous gearbox that people rave about whereas this g15 one is known for being a little bit awkward particularly in third i think yeah it does Than what 
particularly you're used to, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Right, so the clutch on this one. Clutch. Feels well, heavy, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels really heavy. It's also squeaking. Yeah, it's squeaking, it feels heavy. I suspect it needs a new assistance spring down there as well yeah. as an actual clutch, so we will be doing a clutch on this one. Yeah. You'll notice the difference when we get in the white one. First time I got this out of the workshop, I instantly thought the clutch felt. Oh, yeah, you're kind of used to it from that one. Yeah. Should I spin left or right? Where do you want to go? Do you want to go right and go down that bundle? Yeah. Right. God, he wasn't hanging about. Bloody postman. Um, do the sunroof. Do the sunroof. Do you want me to? So try? all the switches are in like random positions on these cars. Let's just check we ain't got nothing behind us because it might be a minute. What about this one? All right. Thanks. Why is that the wipers? I just want the sunroof open, Ollie. It's a hot day. What about this one? Oh, there oh, she is. There you go. That does it quickly as well. Yeah, it's much quicker than 996, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Here Off we, we go. go. Right, so we're going to do a clutch on this one. Yeah, we're going to do a clutch on this one. I'd love to see you adjust this mirror. It's not going to happen while I'm driving. That's my one. Where's the other one? Why is he stopped there? <laughs> I don't know. Why are you asking so many questions? Right, we need to talk about how the car drives. It feels old. I like the steering. I like not having power steering. No, it, it but does. as you get up to speed, obviously it gets lighter. Yeah. When you're trying to manoeuvre it around the workshop and yeah, around our car park, it just feels so heavy. Yeah, well then. So it does this. You get a lot of feedback through it. it gives you a little workout, doesn't it? Yeah, you get a lot of feedback through it. Nah, yeah, you're right. You do get a lot of feedback. Brakes. Can't stamp on them. They work, which is an important thing. I don't really know what else to say about it. To be honest the tracking's a little bit out on this, isn't it? Yeah, it's pulling a little bit to the left. Yeah, we've got a bit of steering on the left a little bit. It needs a new set of tyres as well. I think from memory they're like 2010, but we'll have a look when we get it on the ramp. in both cars that when we get to this roundabout slow come, come to it really slowly the handbrake is sticking in both of them a little bit well not the handbrake just the brakes are sticking generally a little bit like roll to a stop oh the sound so this car the red one has got stainless steel sports back boxes or a back box i don't know what it is yet we haven't been on the ramp we'll have a look when we get it back the white car is quieter and I don't think it's got an aftermarket stainless back box but we'll have a look when we get them up in the air. So this one's got a bit more noise to it. Everyone always goes on about the air cooled like raw noise but the 996, 997 still does have the same sort of like tone and, and bark yeah, to it doesn't it? Yeah. That flat six like bark. You do get more mechanical noise in these because you haven't got the coolant jacket around the engine kind of deafening it a little bit but. bad for Jack, he's just got to sit there grafting away or air out, just gallivanting yeah. around again. We might need to just feed him an ice cream. When we get back? Yeah, we'll feed him an ice cream. Should we go cream. out in the white one and stop off at Tesco and just get some ice cream from the yeah, fuel station? Yeah, get him a Cornetto and he will be a happy boy. A strawberry Cornetto and that's the way to please Jack. It was nice. Go on, go. Stable though, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much stable. You get quite a lot of noise from the windscreen because it's just so upright. You're getting the gist of that gearbox now, it's third. Oh yeah. Oh, you've got that. Oh, it stinks, Ollie. What are you doing? Look at that. That's the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. That probably did less damage. Do you know what I mean? That is a proper door shut, by the way. Why? Well, that's what a door shut should sound like, isn't it? Listen. If you say so. I don't right. Know, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this or not. Where am I going? Where am I going to drop you? back now. We're going to bring this 
this one in, go straight out in the white one for a direct comparison. That on camera. <laughs> <laughs> You still did it again! Come on, Lily. The brakes do stick a bit. Look, just feel it now. Yeah, they, they are. They get worse as they get hot as well. I did notice it when you were pulling it. Yeah, we'll have to take the wheels off and have a look at that. See if I can get it's all clear left, Ollie. You've got loads of room to stall, my friend. Oh, I didn't stall it that time. It, the clutch is a lot lighter, but in a way it makes it more difficult. Yeah, that's why. Because it's thought. got a definitive biting point. Yeah, that's it, obviously what it should feel like. I and mean, we've got no creaking from the pedal either. And it bounces back, doesn't it? You still got that crunch into third though, Ollie. Yeah. It's just an awkward gearbox. Apologies all, it's not a G15 gearbox, it's a 915 gearbox. We get that sunroof open. Yeah, I know how to do that. Just adjust this mirror. I still don't know how to do that. Alright, come on then, give us your impressions of the difference. I know we've only been in the car 30 seconds. Well, but I mean, straight, that heat is on seven. Lovely. I mean, straight away, obviously, yeah. the clutch makes a huge difference in this. But it feels quite similar as, as far as it's going. I think this feels a bit lighter. I think the other one needs a good old geometry. We know yeah. the, you know the tracking's off. Yeah, I around those corners it does feel I like. I suspect it's maybe it's towing out a little bit and it's making it feel quite heavy. Yeah, that may well be why. Got a bit of a knock on the front as well, haven't we? Yeah, yeah front right. Yeah, we do. The best place to hit those bumps is around that cambered left out of Western. Definitely got a bit of appreciation from that guy. Did he just put his thumb up? Did he? Yeah. <laughs> he was a happy chappy to see one of these. That's what you get in these, isn't it? You just get yeah. people putting their thumb up. If you stop at a petrol station, you'll always get some old boy come over to speak to you. Speaking of petrol stations, we need to get Jackson and Cornetto. Oh, yeah. My thoughts are, the brakes feel similar, but you can, they're sticking in both cars, this car more so. The discs feel slightly warped on the other car. When you're yeah. just pulling up, you can just feel them just letting go and then the same amount of brake pressure. Steering-wise, the other one's tracking's out and feels heavier. Yeah, it does, it definitely does. Look at that knock on the front right. Both cars feel solid, though. Yeah, they feel really good. Suspension-wise, that is. Like, neither feel soft on the dampers, neither are knocking or creaking from the bushes on the arms. They're both the engine is smooth as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're both running well. I'd say this one's more so a bit quieter than the other one. The ex oh, well, like I said, the other one's got the aftermarket exhaust on it. Yeah. Jack, we're coming for you. You're gonna be a happy, happy bunny. They've got a really long throw on the gear stick. It's a really long gear stick, it's isn't it? Yeah, it's, 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 really it's just really old feeling. Don't you just love driving it though? Yeah. Are you enjoying yourself? It is fun. It feels like a step back. And it's just car. it's just cool. Yeah, they look really cool. Oh, Ollie! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right, we're heading back now. We've had a rethink. What we're going to do, Jack's not in work tomorrow because he's a big dosser. I say sat in a car doing film while he's there grafting. Um, so we have both ramps tomorrow. So we're going to put the white car on one ramp, the red car on another ramp, and look under both together. We can kind of compare then, which I think would be nicer and more efficient as well. I feel like it. Yeah. Have you ever watched Cars? What, the Disney Pixar? Shoot, no, it's a ditch, you know. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know. Um, oh, mate. You know, Mater. There's one here. He's the tow truck guy and he can drive backwards. Oh, yeah. Better than he could drive forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much me. How can you. But if you wanna travel, then go alone Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go Okay, we've completed both inspections. The cars are still on the ramp. We're gonna run through both of them and give the lowdown and a bit of a comparison, how they stack up against each other. So, white car first. So yeah, the first thing to note on both cars actually is just how corrosion free they are. So you'd expect a car from 1986, both of them are 86s, to be corroded underneath and have some sort of rot, but Look, if we run down both cars, well, I'm running down this one first. The seals are all good. The front end was good as you saw. And the rears of both cars are very corrosion free too. So really impressed with that. Right, mechanically. So start with the, what do you want to do? Start with the, start with the suspension. Um, first of all, because we found, well, we noticed there's a knock on the road. Uh, we went straight to try to find the knock and we ended up finding a lot of excessive play in this wheel here so we suspect this to be the wheel bearing and there's also play on this side but not quite as excessive um, so yeah we'll be doing wheel bearings on both the fronts here we also found in the inspection that the rear shocks were slightly misting it's nothing that bad but I think we've decided we're going to do four shocks on it if you look on that shock absorber, where it looks, it just looks clean. It's just got a very light misting there. And it's the same on both sides. Yeah. So we're gonna do all four shocks on both cars, actually, just so they both feel nice and fresh. There's nothing wrong with the front. No. We haven't got any play, we haven't got any knocks. And in fact, look, they look, <laughs> apart from that light misting, in pretty good condition. Better than most 996 shocks, in fact. So I show the front ones as well. Yes. Yeah, Come on, you shine that torch, Ollie. They're nice and clean, aren't they? But yeah. we've just, yeah, we're gonna do all four so the cars feel beautifully fresh. Another thing we've found in the inspection is this brake here. Is well, we knew about that as well, didn't yeah, we? Just exactly. pulling away from roundabouts. Yeah, it's binding very badly. So that'll need looking into. You're struggling there, really? Yeah, it might need a caliper <laughs> strip down as opposed to this one. As you can see, it moves very nice. And That's free, how it yeah. should be. There's no biting there at all. 
But yeah, yeah, underneath, I mean, these cars are notorious for oil leaks, but look, yeah. as you can see, it's pretty dry. We've got a very light misting here, but it's nothing to worry about. These you don't rocker work. cover gaskets look pretty fresh though, so. Those rocker covers have been off recently, haven't they? Yeah. They've been redone. If you have a look. Same here on this look, side. The nuts don't look too old. And the gasket, you can just see the green gasket. Very nice. Yeah. Newish rear stainless back box. Have we got any more faults in this car that we noted mechanically before we go on to the next one? I don't think we do, do we? Should we just go think through the things we found that were yeah. new? The, new the brake things, pipes yeah, on the, got, the whole car are new, aren't they? Yeah, it's got new brake pipes and hoses throughout. Looks like these rear drop links have been changed at some point. They look pretty new. Yeah, the brake pipes everywhere. They're all new. That copper one going over the top there. Yeah, Simon's done a good job with that. One's on the front. Yeah, all the brake pipes are brand new. Very happy with that. Right, moving on. Move on to the red one. So as we uh, suspected, I mean, we said earlier in the video that this one, I think we'll need more bits and pieces doing underneath. So, yeah. I mean, we if we start, suspension wise, wise, the car's solid, isn't it? And we yeah. said it felt good on the road. Yeah. Thought the wheel alignment might be out a little bit. And the tires, the tires are old on this car. So we'll be putting four tires on this one. The tires are good on the other car. Yeah. The tires are old. And um, so yeah, we'll be replacing. What, like 2010, Jack? Yeah, 2011. 2011. Yeah. So we're replacing all four tires. But other than that, and a wheel alignment, we're gonna do all four shocks like we just spoke about, just so it's nice and fresh. That's it on the suspension in this car, isn't it? There's no yeah, rattles, no play, nothing perishing. And the only thing with this car is we had quite a lot of oil leaks, but it's an oil leak that could have spread over the engine. Well, you've so found a couple of places already, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we've found Let's a couple of look. places already. Um, we have cleaned it down a bit so we can try and localise where it is exactly coming from. Um, as you can see, we definitely know this rocker cover is leaking. So what I will say is when I bought this car from the chap at the uh, RAF camp, he gave me two rocker cover gaskets. So yeah. that was uh, pretty damning for these So guys. we definitely knew this was leaking here. Um, we're just trying to localize. We had an oil leak around here. So we're gonna clean that back, run the car and see where exactly it's so coming from. So you're gonna from. change this rocker cover gasket first, yeah. then clean it all up, yeah. then run it and see if a second one comes back, which yeah. we think it might do. And also likewise in the gearbox here, this cover. Oh yeah, yeah. You can quite clearly see that it's quite badly leaking. There. That shouldn't be too bad to fix, should it? It no. should be a case of getting a gasket and undoing those nuts. And as we can see, they should be nicely lubricated, so. Yeah, they won't be snapping then. But yeah, we knew about this leak as well because my nice new paving out the back is just covered in oil stains exactly where that part of the engine was sat. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, likewise with the white one as well. Not just one, but both of these cool, rear that. brakes are biting quite badly. This one is a lot cool. worse. As you can see, it's not free moving at all. So they'll both need attending to. Mechanically, is that it? I mean, Jack, you did the inspection. Don't be shy. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. Okay, they're just well built, aren't they? Look, we haven't gone through, look, no corrosion on this car either. Generally, for their age, they're um, very clean cars. They're very they? solid. Both seals are very, very clean. Right, it's the end of the day, and we've got both cars tucked inside, safe and sound. I've printed out both PDR reports from earlier today and compiled their job sheets. And there's a few bits and pieces I think are worth noting in the video, which we got to do when we had the cars on the ramp earlier. So what have we got? So the first part of the reports and the inspections is the interior functions, so the electrical bits and pieces within the car. And as you can imagine, there are numerous electrical functions inside the cars that aren't working. So to name but a few, because I won't go through all of them, on the white car, we've got the horn not working. We've got the uh, windscreen and headlight washer jets not working. We've got one of the electrical functions on the driver's seat not working because believe it or not, there are electric seats in these cars. Um, we've got the stereo not working properly on both cars actually that need looking at. And we've got trivial bits and pieces like bonnet struts and fuel cap seals and um, the belts are actually missing in the rear of this car because they've been trying to do 
the club sport evocation. So yeah, we've got numerous bits and trivial bits and pieces like that. Um, we're gonna give both cars a major service and a brake fluid change and an MOT, even though both look as if they've been serviced pretty recently. I will show that actually. Go to the engine bay. So we've got a new looking air filter there in the air box. We've got a new looking oil filter here. We've got a new-ish looking auxiliary drive belt there. A new looking fuel filter back there. So clearly it's been looked after, but we haven't got an invoice from a Porsche specialist or so forth um, in its history. Recent one that is. So we're doing that on both cars. So they've got a fresh bill of health. Right, mechanical bits. On the white car, a couple of bits we forgot. On either side of the engine, so under here, under the rear quarter, and on the opposing side as well, there's a kind of a metal cowling or shield that kind of shields either side of the engine from all the dirt coming up from the rear wheels because you haven't got plastic arch liners like you do uh, on the newer cars. So on the off side, it looks as if um, someone's taken that off and had that shot blast and repainted. But on this side, it's surface corroded. Now, on closer inspection, we were just looking to see how we would get that off and to get it shot blast and painted ourselves. And it looks as if there's about eight bolts that hold it on. Someone's had a go. Obviously, when they're doing that side, they wanted to do the two, um, and one snapped off. So I can only imagine what's happened is they've gone to loosen it off and um, it's snapped because it's very badly seized in there because of the corrosion, two metals obviously welding together uh, within each other. So we're gonna have to continue the job that they didn't finish, get that off, get that shot blasted, get it repainted so it looks tidier under there and prevent it from getting any worse. We've then got something similar on this side. There's, a, there's two oil cooler pipes that run along the driver's side and the one towards the rear of the car, it's a real thick, beefy metal pipe but it's just surface corroded. So again, similar thing, we need to clean that off. We need to recoat it with something to protect it. So the red car. Now, the two notable things that we somehow forgot to talk about when we had the cars on the ramp earlier today is although we mentioned and spoke about the brakes binding on both cars, didn't say that the brakes are wearing thin. So on the red car, the discs and pads all around are wearing quite thin below the tolerances uh, of the specs. So we'll be putting new discs and pads all around on that car. And also what we spoke about when we were out driving, the clutch is heavy. So we're gonna have to do a clutch on that. So it'll be interesting to see the gearbox come out. Um, so yeah, that's us on that one. We've got electrical bits and pieces on the interior as well. Uh, similar things to the white one. So that kind of wraps us up for this video. Um, the next thing is making a decision on which one to keep. I can't keep two. Like I said earlier, I've always wanted a Guards Red. It was a 964, a 3.2 career I wanted. Guards Red with the wing, with the Foosh wheels, black leather interior. So I got offered that and I bought it. But then we got offered this little beauty where they've done the club sport evocation and it's had that light resto and couldn't turn up the offer of that. So um, yeah, I can't keep both. I've got to make my mind up. So I guess what we're gonna do is do all the work in a second part video. We'll document and record all of that. That'd be really interesting to see that being done. Then we'll go out for a drive and see the finished results. And then it's decision time. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments of which one should be kept. And um, we'll see you in the next one.